Chapter 17 Breathing and Exchange of Gases As you have read earlier, oxygen is utilized by the organism to indirectly break down simple molecules like glucose, amino acid, fatty acids, etc. to derive energy to perform various activities. Carbon dioxide, which is harmful, is also released during the above catabolic reactions. It is therefore evident that oxygen has to be continuously provided to the cells and carbon dioxide produced by the cells have to be released out. This process of exchange of O2 from the atmosphere with CO2 produced by the cells is called breathing, commonly known as respiration. Place your hands on your chest. You can feel the chest moving up and down. You know that it is due to breathing. How do we breathe? The respiratory organs and the mechanism of breathing are described in the following section of this chapter. Respiratory organs Mechanism of breathing vary among different groups of animals depending mainly on their habitats and level of organization. Lower invertebrate like sponges, cylindrates, flatworms, etc. exchange O2 with CO2 by simple diffusion over their entire body surface. Earthworms use their most moist cuticle and insects have a network of tubes, tracheal tubes, to transport atmospheric air within the body. Special vascularized structures called gills, branchial respiration, are used by most of the aquatic arthropods and mollusks, whereas vascularized bag called lungs, pulmonary respiration, are used by terrestrial forms for the exchange of gases. Among vertebrates, fishes use gills, whereas amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals respire through lungs. Amphibians like frogs can respire through their moist skin, cutaneous respiration also. Human Respiratory System We have a pair of external nostrils opening out above the upper lips. It leads to a nasal chamber through the nasal passage. The nasal chamber opens into the pharynx, a portion of which is known as passage for food and air. The pharynx open through the larynx region into the trachea. Larynx is a cartilaginous box which helps in sound production and hence called the sound box. During swallowing, glottis can be covered by a thin elastic cartilaginous flap called epiglottis to prevent the entry of food into the larynx. Trachea is a straight tube extending up to the mid-thoracic cavity which divides at the level of the fifth thoracic vertebra into a right and left primary bronchi. Each bronchi undergoes repeated divisions to form the secondary and tertiary bronchi and bronchioles ending up in very thin terminal bronchioles. The tracheae, primary, secondary and tertiary bronchi and initial bronchioles are supported by incomplete cartilaginous rings. Each terminal bronchiole gives rise to a number of very thin, irregular walled and vascularized bag-like structures called alveoli. The branching network of bronchi, bronchioles and alveoli comprise the lungs. We have two lungs which are covered by a double-layered pleura with pleural fluid between them. It reduces friction on the long surface. The outer pleural membrane is in the close contact with thoracic lining, whereas the inner pleural membrane is in the contact with the lung surface. The part starting with the external nostrils up to the terminal bronchioles constitute the conducting part, whereas the alveoli and their ducts form the respiratory or exchange part of the respiratory system. The conducting part transports the atmospheric air to the alveoli, clears it from foreign particles, humidifies and also brings the air to body temperature. 
Exchange part is the site of actual diffusion of O2 and CO2 between blood and atmospheric air. The lungs are situated in the thoracic chamber which is anatomically an airtight chamber. The thoracic chamber is formed dorsally by the vertebral column, ventrally by the sternum, laterally by the ribs and on the lower side by the dome-shaped diaphragm. The anatomical setup of the lungs in thorax is such that any change in the volume of the thoracic cavity will be reflected in the lung or the pulmonary cavity. Such an arrangement is essential for breathing as we cannot directly alter the pulmonary volume. Respiration involves the following steps. Breathing or pulmonary ventilation by which atmospheric air is drawn in and carbon dioxide rich alveolar air is released out. Diffusion of gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide across alveolar membrane. Transport of gases by the blood. Diffusion of oxygen and CO2 between blood and tissues. Utilization of oxygen by the cells for the catabolic reactions and resultant release of CO2 cellular respiration as dealt in chapter 14. Mechanism of breathing. Breathing involves two stages. Inspiration during which atmospheric air is drawn in and expiration by which the alveolar air is, is released out. The movement of air into and out of the lungs is carried out by creating a pressure gradient between the lungs and the atmosphere. Inspiration can occur if the pressure within the lungs, intrapulmonary pressure, is less than the atmospheric pressure. That is, there is a negative pressure in the lungs with respect to atmospheric pressure. Similarly, expiration takes place when the intrapulmonary pressure is higher than the atmospheric pressure. The diaphragm and a specialized set of muscles, external and internal intercostals between the ribs help in generation of such gradients. Inspiration is initiated by the contraction of diaphragm which increases the volume of the thoracic chamber in the anteroposterior axis. The contraction of external intercostal muscle lifts up the ribs and the sternum causing an increase in the volume of the thoracic chamber in the dorsoventral axis. The overall increase in the thoracic volume causes a similar increase in the pulmonary volume. An increase in pulmonary volume decreases the intrapulmonary pressure to less than the atmospheric pressure which forces the air from outside to move into the lungs, that is inspiration. Relaxation of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles returns the diaphragm and sternum to their normal position and reduce the thoracic volume and thereby the pulmonary volume. This leads to an increase in intrapulmonary pressure to slightly above the atmospheric pressure causing the expulsion of air from the lungs that is expiration. We have the ability to increase the strength of inspiration and expiration with the help of additional muscles in the abdomen. On an average, a healthy human breathes 12 to 16 times per minute. The volume of air involved in breathing movements can be estimated by using a spirometer which helps in clinical assessment of pulmonary functions. Respiratory Volumes and Capacities Tidal Volume Volume of air inspired or expired during a normal respiration. It is approx 500 ml. That is, a healthy man can inspire or expire approximately 6000 to 8000 ml of air per minute. Inspiratory Reserve Volume 
I R V Additional volume of air a person can inspire by a forcible inspiration This averages 2500 ml to 3000 ml Expiratory reserve volume E R V Additional volume of a air of air a person can expire by a forcible expiration this averages 1000 ml to 1100 ml residual volume rv volume of air remaining in the lungs even after a forcible expiration this averages 1100 ml to 1200 ml By adding up a few respiratory volumes described above one can derive various pulmonary capacities which can be used in clinical diagnosis inspiratory capacity ic total volume of air a person can inspire after a normal expiration this includes tidal volume and inspiratory reserve volume tv plus irv expiratory capacity ec total volume of air a person can expire after a normal inspiration this includes tidal volume and expiratory reserve volume tv plus irv functional residual capacity volume of air that will remain in the lungs after a normal expiration this includes erv plus rv vital capacity the maximum volume of air a person can breathe in after a forced expiration this includes erv tv and irv or the maximum volume of a air a person can breathe out after a forced inspiration total lung capacity total volume of air accommodated in the lungs at the end of a forced inspiration this includes rv erv tv and irv or vital capacity plus residual volume exchange of gases alveoli are the primary sites of exchange of gases exchange of gases also occur between blood and tissue oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged in these sites by simple diffusion mainly based on pressure concentration gradient solubility of gases as well as the thickness of the membranes involved in diffusion are also some important factors that can affect the rate of diffusion pressure contributed by an individual gas in a mixture of gases is called partial pressure and is represented as partial pressure of o2 for oxygen and partial pressure CO2 that is PCO2 for carbon dioxide partial pressures of these two gases in the atmospheric air and the two sites of diffusion are given in the table 17.1 and in figure 17.3 the data given in the table clearly indicates a concentration gradient for oxygen from alveoli to blood and blood to tissues Similarly a gradient is present for CO2 in the opposite direction that is from tissues to blood and blood to alveoli as the solubility of carbon dioxide is 20 to 25 times higher than that of O2 the amount of carbon dioxide that can diffuse through the diffusion membrane per unit difference in partial pressure is much higher compared to that of oxygen o2 the diffusion membrane is made up of three major layers namely the thin squamous epithelium of alveoli the endothelium of alveolar capillaries and the basement substance composed of a thin basement membrane supporting the squamous epithelium and the basement membrane surrounding the single layer endothelial cells of the capillaries in between them however it's 
total thickness is much less than a millimeter. Therefore, all the factors in our body are favorable for diffusion of oxygen from alveoli to tissues and that of carbon dioxide from tissues to alveoli. Transport of gases Blood is the medium of transport for oxygen and carbon dioxide. About 97% of oxygen is transported by RBCs in the blood. The remaining 3% of oxygen is carried in a dissolved state through the plasma. Nearly 20-25% of carbon dioxide is transported by RBCs whereas 70% of it is carried as bicarbonate. About 7% of carbon dioxide is carried in a dissolved state through plasma. Transport of Oxygen Hemoglobin is a red-colored iron-containing pigment present in the RBCs. Oxygen can bind with hemoglobin in a reversible manner to form oxyhemoglobin. Each hemoglobin molecule can carry a maximum of 4 molecules of O2. Binding of oxygen with hemoglobin is primarily related to partial pressure of O2. Partial pressure of CO2, hydrogen ion concentration and temperature are the other factors which can interfere with this binding. A sigmoid curve is obtained when percentage saturation of hemoglobin with O2 is plotted against the pressure of O2. This curve is called the oxygen dissociation curve and is highly useful in studying the effect of factors like pressure of CO2, H plus concentration, etc. on the binding of O2 with hemoglobin. In the alveoli, where there is high pressure of oxygen, low pressure of carbon dioxide, lesser H plus ion concentration and lower temperature, the factors are all favorable for the formation of oxyhemoglobin. Whereas in the tissues, where low, low pressure of oxygen, high pressure of carbon dioxide, high H plus concentration and high temperature exists, the conditions are favorable for dissociation of oxygen from oxyhemoglobin. This clearly indicates that oxygen gets bound to hemoglobin in the lung surface and gets dissociated at the tissues. Every 100 ml of the oxygenated blood can deliver around 5 ml of the O2 to the tissues under normal physiological condition. Transport of Carbon Dioxide Carbon dioxide is carried by hemoglobin as carbaminohemoglobin, about 20 to 25%. This binding is related to the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Pressure of O2 is the major factor which could affect this binding. When pressure of carbon dioxide is high and pressure of O2 is low, as in the tissues, more binding of carbon dioxide occurs, whereas when the pressure of CO2 is low and the pressure of O2 is high, as in alveoli, dissociation of carbon dioxide from carbaminohemoglobin takes place. That is, carbon dioxide which is bound to hemoglobin from the tissues is delivered at the alveoli. RBCs contain a very high concentration of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase and minute quantities of the same is present in the plasma too. This enzyme facilitates the following reactions in both direction. The reaction is carbon dioxide plus water can give H2CO3 that is carbonic uh, carbonates in the presence of carbonic anhydrates give HCO3 minus plus H plus. This reaction is also reversible. At the tissue site where partial pressure of CO2 is high due to catabolism, carbon dioxide diffuses into the blood, RBCs and plasma and forms HCO3- and H+. At the alveolar site where 
PCO2 that is pressure of CO2 is low the reaction proceeds in the opposite direction leading to the formation of carbon dioxide and water thus carbon dioxide trapped as bicarbonate at the tissue level and transported to the alveoli is released out as CO2 Every 100 ml of deoxygenated blood delivers approximately 4 ml of CO2 to the alveoli. Regulation of respiration. Human beings have a significant ability to maintain and moderate the respiratory rhythm to suit the demands of the body tissues. This is done by the neural system. a specialized center present in the medulla region of the brain called respiratory rhythm center is primarily responsible for the for this regulation another center present in the pons region of the brain called pneumoto pneumo taxic center can moderate the function of the respiratory rhythm center Neural signal from this center can reduce the duration of inspiration and thereby alter the respiratory rate. A chemosensitive area is situated adjacent to the rhythm center which is highly sensitive to carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions. Increase in these substances can activate this center which in turn can signal the rhythm center to make necessary adjustments in the respiratory process by which these substances can be eliminated receptors associated with aortic arc and carotid artery also can recognize changes in co2 and h plus ion concentration and send necessary signals to the rhythm center for remedial actions the role of oxygen in the regulation of respiratory system rhythm is quite insignificant disorders of respiratory system Asthma is a difficulty in breathing causing wheezing due to inflammation of bronchi and bronchioles. Emphysema is a chronic disorder in which alveolar walls are damaged due to which respiratory surface is decreased. One of the major cause of this is cigarette smoking. Occupational respiratory disorders in certain industries especially those involving grinding or stone breaking so much dust is produced that the defense mechanism of the body cannot fully cope with the situation long exposure can give rise to inflammation leading to fibrosis proliferation of fibrous tissue and thus causing serious lung damage workers in such industries should wear protective masks summary cells utilize oxygen for metabolism and produce energy along with substances like carbon dioxide which is harmful animals have evolved different mechanism for the transport of oxygen to cells and for the removal of carbon dioxide from there We have a well developed respiratory system comprising two lungs and associated air passages to perform this function. The first step in the respiration is breathing by which atmospheric air is taken in inspiration and the alveolar air is released out expiration. Exchange of O2 and CO2 between deoxygenated blood and alveoli. Transport of these gases throughout the body by the blood. Exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the oxygenated blood and tissues. And utilization of oxygen by the cells. Cellular respiration are the other steps involved. Inspiration and expiration are carried out by creating pressure gradients between the atmosphere and the alveoli with the help of specialized muscles, intercostals and diaphragms. Volumes of air involved in these activities can be estimated with the help of spirometer and are of clinical significance. exchange of o2 and co2 at the alveoli and tissues occur by diffusion 
rate of diffusion is dependent on the partial pressure gradients of oxygen in bracket PO2 and CO2 in bracket PCO2. Our body, their solubility as well as thickness of the diffusion surface. These factors in our body facilitate diffusion of oxygen from the alveoli to the deoxygenated blood as well as from the oxygenated blood to the tissues. The factors are favorable for the diffusion of carbon dioxide in the opposite direction that is from tissues to the alveoli. Oxygen is transported mainly as oxyhemoglobin in the alveoli where partial pressure of oxygen is higher oxygen gets bound to hemoglobin which is easily dissociated at the tissues where pressure of oxygen is low and pressure of CO2 and H plus concentration are high. Nearly 70% of carbon dioxide is transported as bicarbonate HCO3- with the help of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. 20 to 25 percent of carbon dioxide is carried by hemoglobin as carbaminohemoglobin. In the tissues where pressure of CO2 is high, it gets bound to blood whereas in the alveoli where pressure of CO2 is low and pressure of oxygen is high, it gets removed from the blood. Respiratory rhythm is maintained by the respiratory system in the medulla region of a brain. A pneumotaxic center in the pons region of the brain and chemosensitive area in the medulla can alter respiratory mechanism. So here we complete the breathing and exchange of gases chapter. I hope you enjoyed listening the audio. Thanks for watching.